Hey traders, I hope you all are having a great time. Welcome back to Baby Pips course for today. We are sitting on course 10 of 11 undergraduate senior. And on the outline, we have considered risk management, the bond cost of data for us traders, position sizing, setting stop losses, scaling in and scaling out, which we just concluded. And today we are going to conclude chapter 10, course 10 rather currency correlation with that let us look at currency correlation 10.6 and on that subtopic we have um, uh, further topics like currency correlation explained how to read a currency correlation table and uh, are you doubling your risk without knowing it five reasons why factoring in currency correlations help you trade better be careful currency correlations change how to calculate currency correlations with excel then summary currency correlations so without any further ado let's dive right into 6.1 which is currency correlation explained but before we do so roll the intro <laughs> welcome back guys so here we are on currency correlation explained have you ever heard of the word currency correlation or have you ever heard that when one price rises another price falls? that is to say when the price of a currency pair rises it affects another currency pair that falls at the same time in the same vein you must have noticed that right so <clears throat> it does happen look at this example and there are many times one pair rises it makes another pair to rise and one pair falls it makes another pair to fall as well and there are times whereby currency pairs just move in opposite direction so if you have answered yes to these scenarios then you have just witnessed what is called currency correlation in action well if you say no it means you have not been taking note maybe you're sleeping too much eating too much or playing too much game you need to spend more time watching the charts that's what you have to do study the charts man all right let's go here so what is currency correlation the first half currency you and i know that now correlation what does it mean it simply means a relationship between two things so what is currency correlation now in the financial world currency correlation is a statistical measure of how two securities move in relation to each other currency correlation then tells us whether two currency pairs move in the same opposite or totally random direction over some given period of time so when trading currencies it's important to remember that since currencies are traded in pairs that no single currency pair is ever totally isolated i hope you don't i hope you understand that since currency pairs are traded since currency are traded in pairs like gu eu uj right there is no single currency pair that is totally isolated so <clears throat> Unless you plan trading just one pair at a time, it's crucial that you understand how different currency pairs move in relation to each other. Now, even if you understand that, it is very, very important that you are familiar with how currency correlations can affect the amount of risk you are exposing your trading account to. If you don't know what you're doing by trading pairs simultaneously, then your account can get killed, modified, or destroyed. Can you see? So, this is very, very important currency correlation. Now, what is correlation coefficient? Now, correlation is computed into what is called, what is known as the correlation coefficient, which ranges between minus one and plus one. Now, perfect perfect positive correlation is a correlation coefficient of plus one which implies that the two pairs will move in the same direction 100 percent of the time now perfect negative correlation is a correlation of minus one which means that two pairs two currency pairs will move in the opposite direction 100 percent 
of the time now if the correlation is zero that it, it is flat it means there is no correlation and that the currency pair is completely independent and random from each other okay <clears throat> they are random from each other it is not known how one pair we move in relation to the other so here's the currency correlation it shows the strength and direction of the correlation okay from 0 to 0 0.5 to 0 minus 0 0.5 and uh, minus 1.0 and now we'll have to the right hand side which is strong from plus 0 0.5 to plus 1 okay so have this in the back of your mind now uh, in the next lesson we are going to consider we're going to see how to we're going to learn how to read currency correlation tables very very effectively and so we can see how we can you know factor this knowledge into our risk management techniques that uh, we have been learning about so if you like this lesson please smash the like button it helps you the youtube algorithm so it can show this video to other people who also need to benefit from bbp's course which we are discussing so please smash the like button subscribe if you haven't and i'll see you in the next lesson that says how to read currency correlation tables hello traders so here we are on uh, how to read currency correlation tables so if you like looking at sexy women or honky men these tables will be good for your eyes okay so <clears throat> each table shows the relationship between each main currency pair in orange and other currency pairs in white over a given period of time okay so remember the coefficient level okay minus 1.0 it shows that they are not correlated mm, plus 1.0 shows that they are strongly correlated okay so that is a um, uh the what the figures i mean coefficients means okay so here we have euro usd now you look at the pairs so this is eu this is uj usd chf gu usd card au nzd usd euro jpy and uh, euro gbp so i'll just consider i'll just discuss this one with us right so that we can get it <coughs> this is euro usd is euro usd correlated with euro i mean with usd chf look we have minus 0 0.23 not correlated okay over a one week period uh over a month period it's uh uh 0 0.63 not strongly correlated okay over a three month period it's minus 62 not not i mean strongly uncorrelated now also uh six month period minus 0 0.62 strongly uncorrelated and um, in one year time it's minus 0 0.69 so if you look you, you see uh euro usd and euro uh, i mean usd jpy they are not correlated okay at all now the same thing goes with usd chf you see minus one strongly on correlated right now if you look euro usd and gu you can see that in one month period Okay, let's just go for a one year period okay it's 0 0.88 <clears throat> 0 0.88 right so usd card look at it the same thing now if you look at au in this case you can see that it is uh 0 0.98 0 0.90 0 0.60 0 0.65 so you can trade euro usd and uh aud usd and you can be confident that what well, they are strongly correlated so if euro usd is pushing up australian dollar likely is pushing up as well you can see the figures is almost 1.0 right <clears throat> if you look at nzd usd as well it's almost the same thing the same thing happening here 0 0.96 0 0.93 0 0.42 0 0.65 0 0.96 now if you look at um, euro jpy is 0 0.93 0 0.91 0 0.61 0 0.28 0.66 okay and if you look at eg it's strongly uh point uh, initially for a, a one year period is just 0 0.0.02 0 .02, so not really really uh correlated but you can go with au and uh nzd usd they are strongly correlated pairs okay so you can be trading these pairs together if you want to or you can say oh au is eu is pushing up okay i'm going to buy au i don't want to trade trade uh euro usd but since euro usd is pushing up for instance you can decide to say okay i'm going to buy 
uh, AUD USD. If Euro USD is pushing down, you're gonna you can say okay, I'm gonna sell AUD USD or I'm gonna sell USD uh, NZD USD rather. It goes the same way, okay? So and you do the same for the other pairs and you just go through, watch them very well, and this can tell you how you know best to go into the market if you want to, if you want to trade a uh, correlated pair so with that i, I feel I appreciate the first example we just did please uh, smash the like button it helps with youtube algorithms so that youtube can show this video to all the bbp lovers who, who want to complete the course as well okay so smash the like button subscribe if you haven't and i'll see you in the next lesson that says are you doubling your risk without knowing it so welcome back traders and here we are on are you doubling your risk without knowing it so when you simultaneously trade multiple currency pairs in your trading account always make sure you are aware of your risk exposure for instance trading au and nzd usd is like you know having two identical things trades open at the same time okay even though they are having you know why okay yes because they are having the same correlation au us nzd usd they are correlated strongly correlated okay so if au is pushing up nzd usd is pushing up if nzd usd is pushing down au is also pushing down now you might believe that you are you know spreading or diversifying your risk by trading in different pairs but many pairs tend to move in the same direction so Instead of reducing your risk, you are magnifying your risk. You are unknowingly exposing yourself to more risk. And this is called risk over exposure or over exposure. You are just going to cut yourself off of the branch of a tree. So let's consider uh, the one week period between Euro USD and GBP USD. So here we are Euro USD, one week. Okay. Now we see. There's a strong correlation between Euro USD and uh, GP USD. It's 0.94. Very, very strong, right? Now, based on the correlation that we have just seen, right? It is there's 0.94, uh, which is probably on the high side in this particular pair. So, it's strongly co correlated. It's like these two brothers. Okay, one has a peanut, one has a butter, and all that. Okay, and the good stuff. So. In the example we are looking at right now, you can see that they are actually identical in terms of direction. This is Euro USD. This is a four-hour chart, right? Now let's look at the uh, GBP USD. This is a four-hour chart as well. The same direction. Okay, so if you take one lot size here and you take one here, you are actually trading taking two lot sizes in this particular trade. Okay, if you take one here and you take one here, it's the same thing. You are opening two positions. Okay, thinking. You're just opening two positions over leveraging i mean over yeah exposing yourself to more risk because what happens here will definitely affect this guy here okay and if you instead of thinking you are doubling up your account you are you know actually exposing yourself to decreasing your account the more so you don't want, you don't actually want to do that okay you have to try your best possible to stick to one stick to one if you are going to buy gu then stick to the gu trade if you are going to sell gu then stick to the gu trade i mean eu stick to the eu trade also you don't want to buy eu and sell gu okay there's no way you can buy this guy here eu and then you want to sell gu no way why because they are strongly correlated what happens here happens here so either ways one the profit of one is going to get caught up in the other one or the profit of the other one is going to get caught up in the in, in the one you are not going to make money why because they move in the same direction when this guy pushes up this guy go pushes up as well okay so if you are selling this shorting shorting gu here whereas eu is pushing up your gu trade is going to smash your stop loss you're going to lose and you know be out of the market so uh volatility in within the currency pair is also fickle yeah so let's say you are buying one and selling one you are still not going to make money because even if one pair makes 200 pips okay 190 pips will take you out in the other markets in the other pair as well so that's basically what is saying volatility 
within currency pairs is fickle why because they are always in the same direction okay so going long one currency pair and going short another currency pair uh, that's uh, that are you know, highly correlated is extremely counterproductive just what we have explained so let's look at the second currency correlation example euro usd and usd chf so in euro usd and usd chf let's look at the chart again i mean uh the table again euro, euro usd here usd chf you can see in one week that usd chf is strongly uncorrelated with euro usd they don't flow in the same direction okay so what does this tell us this tells us that they are enemy they are like tom and jerry okay the coefficient is strongly as high as minus one so what do you want to do you want to be careful okay they are like barcelona and real madrid or manchester united and liverpool what whatever the uh, uh, lakers versus uh what is it called now what are the name again yeah boston celtics and the los angeles lakers they are just like that okay they are strongly uncorrelated so let's look at these two pairs to see what we can learn this is euro usd euro usd is pushing down whereas yeah, usd chef is pushing up you see they are strongly unrelated so taking opposite positions on two negatively correlated pairs would be similar to taking the same position on two highly positive correlated pairs. Buying EU and selling USDCHF would be the same as doubling up on a position. For example, if you bought EU and sold, if you bought one lot of EU and sold one lot of USDCHF, you are basically buying two lots of EU because if EU goes up, then USDCHF goes down. And You'll be making money and you'll be making money on both pairs excuse me you will not be making money on both pairs okay you'll be making money on the one pair and you'll be losing money on the other pair so at the end of the day you are actually not making any money so you could have just stood by one by by one pair okay you could have minimized your losses by simply deciding to go long or go short on euro us you i mean euro usd go long or go short on USCHF instead of doing both at the same time why because it is count it is basically counterproductive since you are basically cancelling each trade out if you are buying here it's going up you are buying here or right, this one is going down you are cancelling one trade with another you're just wasting time and wasting your money okay so there is no gain for you in that kind of uh, trade or in that business so uh consider this when making you know your trading decisions and uh when you want to take a trade so if you have liked what we have just discussed please smash the like button it helps youtube algorithm to show this video to other people as well so they can benefit and uh yeah i skip through their uh cost process in a very quick time so smash the like button subscribe if you haven't and i will see you in the next lesson that says five reasons why factory in currency correlations help you trade better hey traders what's up so welcome to this lesson that says five reasons why factory in currency correlations help you trade better now we already know currency correlation tells us whether two currency pairs move in the same direction opposite direction or totally random direction over over some period of time right so we also know that currency correlation gives us uh figures to work with minus one and plus one and so here is a guide that interprets the strength and the weaknesses of the coefficients okay or the values of the coefficients right now minus one is you know tells us that the currency pair is perfect inverse correlation 0 0.8 minus 0.8 is a very strong inverse correlation point minus point six strong inverse correlation minus point four moderate inverse correlation minus point two weak low inverse correlation and zero gives us that uh, tells us there is no correlation at all and it's totally random now point two suggests it's a uh, uh, very weak insignificant correlation point four weak low correlation 0.6 moderate correlation 
1.8 strong high correlation and the 1.0 is perfect correlation so always remember this okay so now that we've known uh, how to measure the co coefficient correlation values of uh, currency pairs now how are we to use this there are several ways in which we can use these currency correlations with our to make our trading very very more successful now the very first way is that it eliminates counterproductive trading right so we know that euro usd and USDCHF they move in the opposite direction 100 percent of the time so opening a long position in uh, euro usd and a long position in USDCHF is pointless because they move in opposite direction so you can't go long here and go long here in something that goes in the opposite direction is pointless okay so that's beneficial to us now the second uh, advantage we we have for knowing how to use currency correlation values is that it leverages profit right so you know we have to double down or minimize our profit or i mean double up our positions again if for instance right <clears throat> uh, these two pairs gu and uh, eu okay we know they are going in the same direction now i want to make money off of them right so we also know that gu is following eu you know virtually every step of the way behind so opening a long position for each pair you know in effect will be taking eu in a double position so we'll be you know over leveraging and uh, yeah when you over leverage over leverage your account you know what can happen so it is actually not very advisable to do so okay because we don't want to leverage on our account however if we know this guy is going up we can leverage on this how we just go here because we know if eu is going up gu is falling just a step behind and we can start here and then we can leverage off of this one that is already pushing up okay so basically we'll be making more profits and uh, trying to avoid losses but in the case that we go to i mean or go long on the same pairs you know we'll be over leveraging our account which is not good now another reason we can use currency correlation to currency correlation coefficient to our advantage is by diversifying our risk so diversify risk now we already know how <coughs> this uh, currency correlation work <coughs> excuse me rather than trading a single currency pair all the time you can spread your risk across two pairs that move the same way so pick pairs that have a strong correlation to each other around 0.7 okay for example say euro usd and gu they tend to move together at the same time right so the imperfect correlation between these two currency pairs gives you the opportunity to diversify which helps reduce your risk let's say you go bullish on usd right so instead of opening two positions of euro usd you could just short eu and short gu which will shield you from you know some risk and diversify your overall positions right okay so you can just you know instead of putting two positions here you can just say okay take this one uh, you put one here on eu put one here on gu okay so if gu is losing for instance right i mean if eu is losing for instance your gu trade will not lose as much as your eu trade why because gu is a step or a few steps behind you okay in correlation so uh it will be lesser affected now the fourth reason we can use currency pair uh currency pair correlation coefficient values to our advantage is hedging our risk now for instance let's say you open a long position on eu and it starts to go against you you can just quickly go and open another position in a pair that goes in the opposite direction of eu and which is usdchf so if you open a long position on eu and it's going against you right it means eu is going down you are buying but eu is falling down okay it means euro us usd pair is stronger what you have to do is just go to pick any usd pair you find you can pick usdgpy or usdchf because you go in the opposite direction and you buy right it shows this tells you that USD usd is strong you go buy USCHF. okay so you take advantage of the different you know this is hedging you are here and it's going against you it tells you it quickly tells you the other currency pair okay the quote currency is stronger than the base currency and you go and pick a base current i mean a quote currency that is a base currency right? and on that pair like here now us usd is base currency here you buy here 
us is a cool currency here okay you you bought euro to sell us us and it's not going against you because us is stronger you go to you go to us jpy us chf rather and you buy here but that way you are hedging okay so what can happen is that let's say while you are buying while your euro us and the uh, um your USCHF have you know a perfect man a negative one percent uh inverse correlation okay their p value might just be different just something very very little so let's say if for instance you sh you lose 10 bucks okay you lose 10 dollar at uh, in your euro usd trade okay you might be making nine point uh, thirty dollar in your USCHF uh trace or how does that happen so let's say you treat ten thousand million lot one pip for every dollar equals one dollar and one pip for the usc equals 93 uh, uh us cents okay so if you do the calculations you see that 93 cents times ten thousand units you know it will give you 99.30 why uh one times ten thousand will give you 10 okay so that is the difference so instead of being down ten dollar you'll be down let's say by you know 70 uh point 70 cents okay so that's the you know the difference between uh, using that it has your advantage or if you are hedging with it if you don't do this believe me believe me your accounts will be bleeding rather than the red wedding in game of drones right so confirm breakout and avoid fake outs you can use currency correlations to confirm breakout and also avoid fake outs as we all know breakouts and fake outs are a constant feature of the forex market so for example let's say euro usd appears to be testing a, a, a significant support level it's testing a support level you observe the price action and you are looking to sell on a breakout to the downside so since you know euro usd is positively correlated with gu and negatively correlated with USCHF and USJPY, you check to see if the other three pairs are moving in the same magnitude as EU. So EU is trying to break, right? You check GU, is GU trying to break also the support? So how do you know this? If it's going to break very well, by the time you look at USCHF and USJPY, you will see that USCHF and USJPY is trying to break resistance. Okay? So, if you notice that the GU is also trading near a significant support level and both the USCHF and USGPY are trading near key resistance level, this tells you that the recent move is a US dollar related and confirms a possible breakout for Euro USD since the other three pairs are moving similarly. So, you can decide, you know, to trade tra to trade the breakout when it occurs, okay? Now, Let's assume that the other three pairs are not moving in the same direction. Like you look at Euro US, USD, I mean Euro USD and GU, they are trying to break support. Okay, then you look at USCHF and USJPY. They are not rising. They are not trying to move anywhere. Okay, let's say USJPY is not rising and USCHF is moving sideways. Right? This should just tell you that there is a strong sign that the Euro USD decline is not us dollar related okay it's not because of what is happening to the us dollar and most likely driven by some kind of negative eu news okay so since price may actually trade below the key support level you have been monitoring because you know the other two correlate pairs aren't moving in the same proportion with the eu you know that there's going to be a lack of any price action following through that breakout because the other pairs have told you that they are not rising usc usc has told you it's not rising and usc chef is telling you that it is pushing sideways that is how you confirm the fake out so you just stay out of the trade okay just stay it's not the break. it's not going to break down okay they're just going to give you that fake news that eu news to push price down you know so that uh breakout traders can get in once they get in you see the price put bounces back off into support and what have you the trade goes against those uh, breakout traders and you just continue to ride the trade back to the top side because it's not going to the downside so uh, anyway but if you think if you feel strongly that the trade setup is very correct and you still want to go ahead what you can do is that uh you just you know risk something very little like whatever you whatever size you think is, is good for you to risk 
just put, put in a very smaller position size and just trade and just let the work play out but if it doesn't play out just know that yeah it was a fake news and then they were just trying to you know do some fake out and uh, some break fake out and break out and what have you so that's uh how we come to the end of this lesson five uh reasons why factoring in currency correlations helps you to trade better so if you like this lesson please uh, smash the like button it helps with the youtube algorithm so that they can show this video to more people who are learning from bbp's course as well and if you click the like button it will help the algorithm if you drop a comment also it will also help the algorithm to show this video to others so let's help our community okay to grow and uh, in the next lesson i'm going to see you where we are going to discuss uh, be careful currency correlations change so smash the like button subscribe so welcome back traders to so be careful currency correlations changes so in this lesson we are going to learn a lot so let's begin by telling you that the forest market is a mad patient suffering from bipolar disorder who constantly eats chocolates experiences extreme high sugars and has volatile mood swings all day long okay why do we say this because this is actually true currency correlations changes okay now although currency correlations between currency pairs can be strong you know or weak for days months weeks or even years they do eventually change and can change when you least expect it to happen okay so look at the table here this is euro usdjpy look at usdchf it's all to be correlated but see how weak it is 0.22 then negative 0.50 and then 0.50 and then 0.78 and then 0.74 after a year so you see in just one week it was not very strong then the following month it dropped and became super weaker in th three months it became it balances itself back up six months it became 0.78 and in one year it became 0.74 so if you compare the figures okay across the different time frames what do you notice okay you notice that <clears throat> currency correlations do change and they change frequently okay uh they change frequently <clears throat> and that's a big swing okay so <clears throat> excuse me and uh, so it is important for you to pay attention to that <clears throat> all of all these stuff here is just what i have explained here how it changed in one week one month and all that so you can see that in those two pairs okay they had a breakup in their long-term relationship and uh, what was one strongly positive association in the past has extremely weakened in the short term so maybe people is saying that if they were dating if this currency pair were dating right if you as if you are and you as if you were dates right and they're in a relationship in the very first week it was hmm, it was weaker not very strong and after just one month oh my goodness they will say no we are incompatible can you imagine that negative 5.2 negative 0.52 oh no but what happened in the third month they were up positive 0.52 and in the sixth month they were up positive 0.78 and in one year they were up positive 0.74 as well even though that was a two percent change in the figures so if they were you know really a couple they would have said okay no let's call this off okay however if you also look at euro usd and gpp GU, gbp usd in the example above <clears throat> in just one week of, of strong correlations you find out that the coefficient is 0.94 okay but this relationship is really deteriorates in one month period dropping to 0.13 before improving again for each three months period to a solid 0.83 then deteriorating again to a weak correlation in six months so let's see how that works so eu gu we said eu is a big brother when it's going up gu is behind right so in one week what do we say 0.94 now in one month what do we see 0.13 okay very very weak now in three months it's caricature again 0.83 and in six months what is going on here 0.31 but in one year 0.88 right so that is how currency correlation works <clears throat> we can see it's changing from time to time now let's even look at uh 
usd jpy and nzd usd so nzd usd and usd jpy what do we see now these pairs in the very first week it was just 0.76 right and although let's establish that it is highly uncorrelated now uh, in one month time it rose up to 0 0.64 oh my goodness it does that mean it is really correlated no look at point zero nine that's in three months time okay it's very very weak as well and in six months time this is where you see the on you know unmatched on correlation it's very very uncorrelated point six three negative negative point six three and in just one year after a year rather it's negative point six nine so you you agree that this one year coefficient was uh you know um Point, negative 0.69 now this indicates a moderate to strong correlation so in a nutshell be careful currency correlations change for many different reasons this can include anything from a country changing interest rates to shifting monetary policy or any collection of economic or political events reshaping traders sentiment on a currency so if you like this session Please smash the like button. It helps with YouTube algorithm. I'm reminding you, yes, yeah, so that you can do so, so that we can help our community to grow. I think we are up to a thousand subscribers now, and kudos to that. I mean, we are getting to a thousand subscribers, and kudos to that. So, when people see these videos and they see your comments and they see your likes, it helps them to know that yes, these videos is beneficial to them. So, please drop your like button. I mean, smash the like button. Subscribe if you haven't. And I will see you in the next lesson that says how to calculate currency correlations with Excel. So guys, here we are on how to calculate currency correlations with Excel. Honestly speaking, I haven't done this before and we are going to take it together. Let us read. Okay. So correlations will shift and change over time. Okay. So keeping on top of the current coefficient strength and direction becomes even more important. Now, lucky for you, it can be calculated and done from home using Microsoft Excel. But any software that utilizes a correlation formula will also work so step one let's assume that you won't be magically creating the daily price data out of thin air but rather we'll be getting it somewhere online and our source will be the federal reserve so should we go there right now no let's hold on so what do you do open up excel and copy and paste your data into an empty excel sheet or open the exported data file from step one so let's go to federal reserve so here we are on the site of fed economic data right so you come here and you download the spreadsheet now i don't even know the exact spreadsheet i admit that but it could be something like this or this or this and these are from what um 2006 to november 2021 or December 6th, right? And I think this is up to date. So you can get this first one. It is from December 20, uh, 2006 to December, um, December uh, 2021, December 10, 2021. This is just one day ago, okay? Or so. So this should be the index. This should be, okay, this is nominal board index. And uh, yeah, you get a bone. There are a lot here. So download the one that works best for you come back paste it on an empty excel spreadsheet now you have to arrange your data to look like the following or something similar you know colors and font that you have that you know best suits you and you make it like that <clears throat> and now it's time to decide the time frame do you do you want last week's currency correlation last month or last year you just you know uh compute it out and uh make it work so you can see you can put the figures equals to correlation and then you can type the one you want honestly speaking i'm just scrolling through because i know we are not going to do this but if you want to do this please come back and read this step by step follow it uh, on the site and voila you'll be able to get your currency correlations from the data i mean you can see how it was all i mean correlated here okay and so do that for the sake of this study this will be should be your assignment okay i'm giving you this assignment go to this website download this
put it up in your excel uh, sheets period sheets do all these computations all these calculations and work it out and then you have the currency correlation so if you have just liked what we have just discussed or learned please smash the like button it helps the youtube algorithm to show this video to more bbps uh, students out there who wants to learn and you'll be helping them by the time they see your comments by the time they see your likes they will know that you have benefited maximally from this video so please smash the like button subscribe and i will see you in the next lesson that says summary currency correlation let's go there so guys here we are on summary currency correlation i'm actually excited we have completed course 10 by the time we discuss all of all of all this okay all of all of all of all all of all so that's a pun just playing on words so um like we already know currency correlations is like synchronized swimmers you see them here right synchronized swimmers some currency pairs move in tandem with each other and like magnets of the same poles that touch each other currency pairs move in opposite direction as well so when you are simultaneously trading multiple currency pairs in your trading account the most important thing is to make sure you are aware of your risk be aware of your risk don't go burn your account don't go blow your account don't throw your money away okay be aware of your risk exposure our number one assignment in the forex market is to be what what are we no honestly speaking what are we what is our primary to primary duty in the forex market is it to make money tell me if you know no i'm not going to see the answer right now what is your number one primary activity in the market what is your duty what should you wash out for now if you've forgotten let me tell you this this is your primary responsibility in the market you are a r i s k m a n a now so i'm typing I'm, as you see me writing all of this right if you know the answer to this what i'm about to write drop it in the comment section just type this in the comment section okay and we'll have g and we have e and we have arrow you are a risk manager that is your job manage your risk do not think about the profit you want to make do not think about the money you want to make think about how you are going to manage your risk this is your job to manage your risk okay get this not the profit but your capital not the money you want to make it's your risk manage your trading capital because you leave to trade another day don't blow your account because you are trying to make some money no be very very grateful with break even trades when the trades goes in your direction put it in the break even trade your stop when you come down smash up your, your stop loss you made some money instead of making 300 which you are thinking about and you made 50 that's good trade you're a great trader manage your risk <clears throat> be more conscious about your capital than you are about the profit you want to make okay so Apart from managing your risk, uh, which all uh, which brought us I mean we got that from you know risk exposure. You might also want to think that uh, spreading the vers diversifying your risk uh, by trading in different pairs is good, but you are also exposing yourself to more dangers uh, in the in the same in the same way. Now, by trading pairs that are highly correlated, you are also just magnifying your risk. Currency pairs, currency correlations between pairs that can be strong or weak and they can last for weeks months or even years but always know that they can change at any time okay staying up to date with currency correlation can help you become uh can make you make better, better decisions if you want to leverage hedge or diversify your trades remember we learned that right now a few things to remember remember coefficients remember the positive coefficient remember the negative coefficients okay now you remember that plus one is telling you that it's very strong okay minus one is telling you it's very very weak okay so 
currency pairs that typically move in the same direction here they are okay we have eu and gu eu and au eu and ncd usd usd chf and usd jpy au and ncd usd okay now currency pairs that typically move in the opposite direction eu and usd chf gu and usd chf usd card and au usd jpy and aud usd and uh, gbp usd and usd chf so when you find yourself wanting to trade two pairs as are highly correlated it's okay if you take both setups but just make sure you have your rules in place when trading okay when trading correlated pairs and always stick to your risk management rules hear that stick to your risk risk management don't blow your account please stick to your risk management rules you are a risk manager okay stick to your risk management uh, rules so guys this brings us to the end of course 10 of 11 we only have one more course left to go so if you are happy to have considered this so far please type in the comment section i am graduating just type there i'm graduating from baby piece okay just show me some love guys show me some love let's show the community some love let's tell people we are making progress we are done we are almost almost done with baby people school okay so drop a comment of our gratitude tell people in the comment section how you've benefited so far from baby people's course using this youtube channel and smash the like button for me subscribe if you have with my friends and until next time i'll see you in graduation course 11. Yee -hoo -hoo!